justice for all! Dragon's got a fucking cup of tea. Let's get back in court. <laughs> Dude! I cannot believe that Adrian- No way! Not cool and collected Adrian Andrews! She is your manager. It would have been easy for her to pull this off. Very easy, dude. The only person who had easy access to the knife you used at dinner was, well, her. So after the ceremony during the break, huh? I was sleeping like a log the entire time. See, she could have also she could have also easily planted that blood-covered button in your hakama. Mm. Because she was the one that came to wake me up? Then, dude, you're saying it was really her? Yes, she is the real killer. She was the one who murdered Juan Carga. But why? I thought she was bad with Juan. She has her own agenda. Her own agenda? What? What are you talking about? I'm sure you'll see by the time this trial's over. It'll be alright. I'll get you acquitted by the end of the day. Give me a verdict that's refreshing like a spring breeze. Okay, Miss Alora, dude? Phoenix, you see her motive is related to Celeste Impax's missing suicide note, right? Yes. <laughs> you did it again. Miss Andrews depended on Miss Impact as her strength and reason to live. But then Miss Impact suddenly killed herself. Sounds like she left a suicide note and the person thought to have hidden it. It's one corridor, the victim of this murder. And that's why I think Miss Andrews got close to Miss Corridor. Mr. Sorry. That's why Miss Andrews got close to Mr. Corridor. I wasn't looking properly. All to get the suicide note back. That sounds plausible. Thank you. But one thing bothers me. Um, what? Who was it that first told us about their relationship? Better stated, Miss Andrews's dependency issues in regards to Miss Impacts. Edgeworth. It was Edgeworth. It looks like he's still the one in command of this ship. Hmm. I suppose. Hmm. He did leave me. He did. Leave the universe. He did. And I've left you for quite some time, Phoenix. I'm actually dead. And I only come back because I'm in a family of spirit mediums. And I'm very good at possession. Anyway, don't let your guard down yet. Yeah, it's not with my boyfriend running the place. Hmm. Good cup of tea. Uh, Glad you're happy with that. Yeah. Very happy with the cup of tea. Give a wiggle. Court will now reconvene. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you please. The prosecution will call the oh, fuck. I haven't been here for a while. <laughs> the prosecution calls the witness subpoenaed by his this court. By this court. Yes. What are you staring at, Edgeworth? Mm -hmm. This very, very good piece of paper I have here. It's it's very beautifully made. Uh -huh. Yes. <sighs> Miss Adrian Andrews, the person who discovered the crime in Mr. Juan Corridor's room. What is your occupation? I am the manager of the defendant in this case, Mr. Matt on guard. I see, now then. Before we begin, Your Honour, I have one request. Uh, yes, sure, what is it? 
I'm sure everyone in this room is wondering the same thing and would love to find out more about my relationship with the victims. After all, it was the topic of a certain weekly magazine recently. Ah, uh, no. I have no idea what you mean. I've never even heard of Gossip Land! Judge myself for a prosecution like this. You do all my work for me. Anyway, I was wondering if you could please tell us about your relation to the victim. Yes, I was seeing Mr. Coroner. I was also aware of the rivalry that existed between Matt and Juan. Fucking card again, it's gonna bug me. Mm. But this was a private matter between Juan and myself. Mm, so it was a Brian Bates matter, or was it. Was, was that Bates and Juan? That reminds me of Bishop. But I... I didn't kill him. No one is accusing you of that. I think there's someone who would beg to differ. I hope you all understand your relationship with the victim. Now, Miss Andrews. Very well then. Witness, please testify to the court. About what happened when you discovered the murder that had taken place? When I found the body. It was time for the show to start, so I went to get Matt from his room. And there was his dead body. I, I was in shock. What I saw was the exact same scene as in the crime scene photo. I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. Something to consider. You poured yourself a glass of juice? Yes, sadly I didn't remember not to touch things at the scene of the crime. And I disturbed the crime scene by moving this one thing. And that is when the fingerprints on the wine glass were made, Your Honour. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross examine the witness. Phoenix. She is one cool and collected customer, and she has the brains to match. Yes, I know. In order to catch a person like her, you have to avoid head on confrontation. You should disrupt her pacing. Disrupt her pacing? She's the type of woman who is easily thrown off by things inconsistent with her thinking. Hmm. So you have to attack when she least expects it. The instant you let up on your offence is the instant this trial is over. Understand? Why? Go ahead. And why did you do that? As a friendly gesture, Juan was to make an appearance with the other heroes. So the show was supposed to be a show of friendship, huh? Press further. Press. Is that the only reason? I beg your pardon. What are you implying? You had a certain goal in mind when you started to get close to him, correct? So perhaps you had a more personal matter to discuss with the victim? Sorry, but I didn't have any such intention in mind at the time. I've just talk about strong his evidence, I guess. May we continue now? What, was, what did you see when you got to this room? Were you in shock? You were in shock? What? Was I not supposed to be? Sanchez is a very calculating person, and despite how close they were, I doubt she had a room had romantic feelings for Mr. Corridor. Anyone randomly stumbling upon a dead body would be in shock. And you can't seriously expect that a young beauty like her would not be shocked. That is objective, right? 
it. Somehow, I don't think beauty has anything to do with being shocked or not. was the exact same as the photo. Can't really fight that at the minute. Yeah, you wanna know why did you pour yourself fucking juice? Juice. Yes, there was a bottle of tomato juice on the table, so I have it myself. But you didn't drink any of it, did you? Uh-huh. There were no lip marks left on this wine glass to suggest that anyone drank from it. I wasn't feeling terribly great, so I set the glass down. Miss Andrews, I would like to confirm with you one more time. When you discovered the dead body of Juan Cardo, you were in great shock. And that's when you poured yourself a glass of juice, correct? Um, what of it? My mind really was a complete blank at the time. Uh, we will find out about the card eventually. My mind was a complete blank. I didn't think that was possible for you. Aren't you rude today? I was so dazed that I made one careless mistake. That one thing. What one thing? Oh, never mind. It's no big deal. I was just starting to see just now. That's brother. Miss Andrews, I'm convinced that, as you said, you made a mistake at the scene of the crime. What I really want to know is what this mistake was. Hmm, actually, so would I. I... I'm sorry. It's just, it's kind of embarrassing. When I... when I set the glass down on the dresser, I accidentally knocked the flower vase over. Impossible. The flower vase? Are you talking about the one on the floor in the crime photo? This mess of glass shards. It was originally on top of the dresser. But when I bumped into it with my elbow, it fell onto the guitar case. Well, why did you withhold such an important piece of information? I'm sorry. I thought that since the crime scene was already in disarray, that people would simply assume that the vase was just another part of the mess. Looks like it's another fact has come to light here. Please add this and anything else you have to reveal to your testimony. I'm sorry, but I have nothing more to add. I didn't touch anything else. Hold on a minute. The guitar case was just open. I called it the di guitar. Yeah, no, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. She says she didn't touch anything else. But only the lid of the guitar case was wet. And it was open at the scene of the crime. Right. So, present the case. First page, dum dum. Fuck off. Objection! So he's only got his fingerprints on them. You testified that you knocked the flower vase over, is this correct? Yes. And are you sure it fell onto the guitar case? I... Is there something wrong with what I said? It's not some problem, it's a major problem! It's true that the top of the guitar case was wet with water, however, that's exactly what is so strange! Miss Andrews, you testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case. However, if that was true, the case should have gotten wet on the inside, not the outside. Th that's very true. Furthermore, there is one other strange thing about this guitar case. And w what is that? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. 
The remains of the vase are scattered on the floor. And what is wrong? And what is wrong with that? If the guitar case was open when the vase fell, the glass shard should be inside, not outside the case. What is your point, Violet? That case was closed at the time the vase was knocked over. Is that all? <laughs> no, think back to what Ms. Andrews testified to. She said that nothing other than the va she said that other than the vase, she didn't touch anything else. Mm. Yes, that's right. She did implicitly say she didn't touch the guitar case. But this whole matter with the guitar case. Fuck. With the guitar case? Oh, I said, what did I say again? The guitar case yeah. again. <laughs> I am going to love this. So, carry on with the guitar case. This whole matter with the guitar case is a dead end. No, it's not. The bright red guitar was found at the studio. It had no bearing on this case at all. It has every bearing. That may very well be, however, ah, the empty guitar case does seem to have no relation to this case, doesn't it? Phoenix, you're slow! It's everything to do with it! Everything! Yeah, why would she open it, in a sense? Yeah, that's gonna fucking annoy you, because that guitar case has- that guitar and guitar case has everything to do with why one corridor was corridor was killed. You know what I mean? Kind of. Anyway, let's keep going. Hmm. It seems that there is no inconvenience to the guitar case. Yes, there is. <laughs> You're just angry about this. Is funny. Well, Mr. Wright, do you think we need him or Jesus? Yes, make her testify. The empty guitar case. I believe this is a crucial piece of the puzzle. <laughs> I can't believe anyone would reach for straws like this. But it is you. You're not thinking correctly. No, I'm not saying that. I can't believe I'm doing this either. No, I'm not saying that because I know! I know! Yeah. No, I'm not... I can't believe I'm doing this either. Fuck it. Alright, I'll follow along for now. Miss Andrews, please testify to the court about the guitar case. Yes, Your Honour. I don't remember too clearly because I was a bit dazed. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case. Try not the vase over. <laughs> Keep going. Ah! <laughs> it's not a deal though, right? The case was empty after all. As for why I opened the case, I don't know. It looks like this what really wasn't a very important point. This wastefulness is such a familiar feeling by now that it's almost Comforting. Anyway, I'll just go ahead and start the cross-examination. <laughs> Using any way to change the topic. A convenient escape for a weak man. That's what we were saying last night. We weren't together last night, right? Uh-huh. You told the court that. <sighs> you want to testify that. I testify we weren't together last night because you still hate my guts. Hmm. And you're babysitting that child, remember? Oh, yeah. I think the child is gone, however. Anyway, so, I'll uh, obviously just present the guitar case again. That's exactly what I was gonna do because- Oh, stop saying it wrongly! Did you say the I think I said it again! <laughs> okay. Right, let's go. Let's... Guitar, guitar, guitar. I learned to play the guitar, so why am I calling it the ditar? Right, let's go through it one letter at a time. The guitar. G U 
I. I can spell, T motherfucker. A. Ah, uh, guitar. Re really, 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 because you keep saying guitar. So. It's because it's always the the. I think it, the the is pi piffling me off, you know? It's knocking me off. <laughs> I suppose I must have opened the guitar case. Because I keep trying to say it in a flow of a sentence and I go, I must have opened, I must have opened the guitar Ofen. case. Open. Oh, oh. No, never. Present that pissing case. There is no way you were the one who opened the guitar case. Why would you say that? It's elementary, my dear. <laughs> Why? It's elementary, my dear. Because the only fingerprints on the, this guitar case are those of the victim. Oh. So you were wearing What is it, Miss Andrews? You shouldn't assume that I must have left prints just because I touched the case. You are giving me what I need. Mm -hmm. You are doing my work for me. Yes. What do you mean? What if I were to tell you that I was wearing gloves at the time? Because how did your fingerprints get on the gloves? Mm -hmm. the gloves. Why would you be wearing gloves at the time? It was the night of the awards ceremony. So of course I dressed up for the occasion. Yes, now I remember. I'm almost sure I was wearing a pair of thin gloves. Hmm, I see. Well, Mr. Wright, it seems that you're wearing gloves at the scene of the crime. That's strange. Mm -hmm. You're wearing gloves, isn't that a little strange? <laughs> Why is that strange? Do you have something that would prove I was not wearing gloves at the time? Take that! I have your proof right here, the wine glass. This wine glass. The wine glass? You left your fingerprints very clearly on this wine glass! Even if you took your gloves off when you poured this glass of juice, wouldn't you think it was just a little strange? That you put your gloves back on just to open the guitar case? Ah! What the fuck was... Oh. Her glasses blew up. Ah! I thought that she had spares just... Oops! Broke these ones. Back on they go. Order, order, order. Anyone with glasses knows you should always have a spare pair. Well, duh. But I don't carry my spare pair with me all the time whenever I go anywhere. Well, no, me either. Sometimes the first time I stopped wearing my other pair, I started wearing these. You turned around and went, ah, at me. Yeah, no, I'm used to it. I'll just you wait till they change again. Ugh. Looks like you hit the nail on the head this time. This time? Huh? What do you mean? I believe the guitar case plays a very important role here. Did I say it correctly this time? Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, <laughs> fuck off. Move on. But it's just an empty case. I wonder if it really was empty, though. But, but the guitar, the bright red guitar, was at the studio. Phoenix. Drop all of your presumptions. What was in the guitar case that was the not What was in the guitar mm! What was in the guitar case was not the bright red guitar. Now I feel like I'm sitting across from Hermione. So there be Osa, not there be Osa. <laughs> you don't mean White guitar- wait, that's not right either. Excellent. Hmm, I admit it would be a match for someone to do that. So the witness was not wearing gloves, despite the fact that on the case. Oh Your Honour, this is obviously the defence's usual misdirection tactic at work. Fuck off. 
steer the court towards an unrelated topic and lull us all into his misguided. No, Your Honour. Please recall that Miss Andrews had testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case, which means that the case was closed when the crime took place. However, it is wide open in this photo of the crime scene. I am sure this guitar case has some relation to the murder. If you are social, right, then I'm sure you can somehow substantiate your outrageous claim, correct? Please enlighten us as to why that guitar case has anything at all to do with this murder. Uh, can you do that, Mr. Wright? Um, well, let's suppose for a second that the bright red guitar was not the only thing that could have been in the case. The bright red guitar was not... not the bright red guitar not being the only thing. You, you don't mean to suggest that the bright... Yeah, yeah. No! So, you intend to push your theory that the case was not empty? Is that it, right? Yes! I wouldn't say something I didn't intend to prove. Deflate that head of yours. You haven't proved anything yet. Deflate yours first. Fuck you. Fucking yourself, you coward. Mm. Now then, let's have it. What was inside this case at the time of the murder? It should be a piece of evidence, not a profile. Why would a person be inside the case? But the only thing that I can... The only thing I can think of to present... Um, 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 um. You want so, to do them again? There's no point in putting the suicide note in there. Why would he bring that with him? That's very true. Dude, I don't know anything about supposed ceremony, so. What was that? Dude, I don't know anything about the post ceremony show. The ticket. The nickel samurai is to confess something after the post ceremony stage show. Matt knew nothing about it. So, why would the jamming ninja not have brought his guitar? Juan was planning to say something about Matt, it seems, I assume. Mm. Right, uh, so I guess the picture that Lotta took. That one? Yeah. Wait. Just check it. That's the picture of the Nickel Samurai because Adrian then might have put on the costume to leave at that time. Especially if she knew that Lotta was out in the corridor, ready to take snaps of her leaving Juan's room. Mm. That's me pressing wrong buttons. <laughs> it's cute. This, this is this is a photograph. Yes, but what is important is what is in that picture, Your Honor. The costume. I knew there had to be two. Well, yeah, because if Matt was sleeping in the other one and never took it off, there had to be two. Mm -hmm. Yes, but what is important is what is in that picture, Your Honour. In this picture? It doesn't take a genius to see what I mean. What I'm proposing is inside the guitar case was the Nickel Samurai, the hero's very own costume. What? What? M Mr. Wright, explain yourself. Right? Are you saying the witness opened the guitar case to take out a costume? What a... S what insane point would there be to do s doing something like that? That insane point would be to wear the costume, of course. Miss Andrews put it on to hide her identity so she could make her escape. After all, you couldn't let anyone see you leave, could you, Miss Andrews? But I 
I refuse to accept your theory. Do you have anything to support such a preposterous idea? Just outside the door was an investigative photographer who was starving for a big scoop. Aha! I was right. And in the end, she managed to get this shot, correct? You humiliate this photo! Oh, as I should note to everyone, I don't remember the game off by heart, so I am sort of figuring things out at the same time as the old dragon did. I just like. Oh, rude. Dude, my brain with theories just goes. Oh, yeah, considering how many times you theorize and rise from the ashes. There we go. Order! Order! It looks like we've wandered into quite another mess again, haven't we? Nice job, Phoenix. Thank you. Ah, you know my strategy. Speak first, think later. Hmm, so the real murderer was hiding inside a costume. Wait one second, Your Honor. The Nickel Samurai costume would have been Mr. Matt on guards. Why would something of the defendants be in the victim's room? And inside the guitar case, of all places. Hmm, true. This is a little baffling. Mr. Wright, the court would like to hear your thoughts. What was this Nickel Samurai costume doing inside the guitar case? It was a spare costume. Oh yeah, why would they only have one? Mr. Ongard did not take his costume off during the break period. In that case, the costume we are talking about was a spare one. What? Then, are you saying that on the night of the murder, there were two Nickel Samurai costumes in the Game Water Hotel? Yes, that is what I'm saying. And how do you explain the costume that was inside the guitar case? It would mean that the victim himself had brought this spare to the ceremony on purpose. But, but why? The victim, Mr. Corrigan, was the jamming ninja. Why would he secretly bring the Nickel Samurai's spare costume with him? What could be the reason behind such a peculiar act? And therein lies the sticking point. Objection! What are you mumbling to yourself about now? Have you just been rambling all this time without any sense of inner monologue? Huh? No, I just... Mr. Wright, please explain yourself! Why do you think the victim had the Nickel Samurai's spare costume? Phoenix, are you sure you can explain this one? Yes. Think carefully before you answer. And then answer. And then answer with gusto. I believe in you. Shut up. Answer. Shut up, Phoenix. Answer. Answer with gusto! Alright, this is what I think. The reason the victim brought the Nickel Samurai's spare costume to the hotel was. And now it's the ticket. Mm-hmm. Has to be. What is this? On the night of the murder, after the stage show, the Nickel Samurai was going to hold a special press conference. A press conference? Yes, the Nickel Samurai was supposed to confess something at this conference. I heard about this as well. For once, you're not making something up, right? But what struck me as strange was that Mr. On Guard himself said that he had no idea he was supposed to be holding a press conference that night. But how can that be? The way I see it, that can mean only one thing. The conference was set up by none other than the victim, Mr. Juan Corridor himself. The, the victim! Yes. The spare nickel samurai costume was prepared for that very conference. Mr. Corridor was going to hold the press conference as the nickel samurai. God, I'm in a choir. I know my fucking breathing. Mm -hmm. He was going to dress up as the nickel samurai and hold a conference? But what did the victim- Why would- But what? 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 But what? 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 But why would the victim do such a thing? 
That's something I don't quite know yet. However, what I am concerned with right now is what he intended to reveal at that conference. The Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. If I confess, I'd wager he was going to reveal something about himself. Which means that one corridor posing as the Nickel Samurai was going to speak about Matt on guard. Yes, I guess that I guess that is what Twitch would mean. But if that's the case, that's not a confession, that's public disclosure. Miss hmm. Andrews? I can see why you are pros at what you do. P pardon me? Yes, just as you say. The press conference the press conference was set up by Juan. <laughs> <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Please, no. <laughs> what? I don't want to remember that case. Well, oh, but did you you miss the judge's line again? I did. <laughs> I was the one he asked to help set it up. And the person who prepared the second costume for him, that was also me. You! Juan had bet everything on the jamming ninja this year. And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought anyway. He was going to ruin him? Huh? It looked like somehow Juan had it had in his hands a secret so powerful. Oh. That it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. What? Oh my god. Oh my fucking What? What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just a crazy get out on the theory. What if Matt's the one that hit Celeste and Pax's suicide note? Or had something to do with or it. Or had something to do with the death. Hmm. That would ruin his acting career. It would, because he's no longer as refreshing as a spring breeze if he's uh, wrapped up in suicide. That's not very refreshing. Nope. And do you know what the secret of Mr. On Guards is, Miss Andrews? That's something only Juan knew. I, I don't know what it is. Fucking liar. Oh, I see. I... I've probably been coming off quite suspicious to everyone. Just a bit, dear. It has to be expected. Why? I've been trying to protect Matt, after all. Protect Mr. On Guard? And yet again, another strange bit of truth comes to light, it seems. Ms. Andrews, if you could, please tell us the truth about your behaviour. Yes, Your Honour. I understand. Fucking card is pissing me off! From the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was the murderer. Yep. Matt had to kill Juan no matter what. How the hell... He didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course. The button, and the knife. But I'm Matt's manager, so I felt I had to protect him. That's a fishy testimony from start to finish. Hmm. Hmm, this does account for everything. Well, I am the logical type. Yeah. You are the logical type. Hmm. You're finally seeing her true self. She is more nervous than a scared rabbit. If the defense can find no fault with his testimony, I am ready to make a ruling. Please keep in mind that I was, please keep in mind that in mind that you cross examine Mr. Wright. It's like somehow everything is swung to the opposite end of the scale again. 
That just means I have to put my weight into this and turn her logic upside down. Which is very easy to fucking... My car is going to piss me off so many fucking times. Yeah, it will. It's pretty tight though. Mm -hmm. Alright. You made a face at this one, same as I did. Oh well, yeah, why? Why? Did you say that was your intuition speaking to you? My methods of reasoning with your own. Ah. If you want to prove that someone did something, you need three things. Three things? A motive, an opportunity to commit the crime, and finally, decisive evidence. sleeping like a log. Mm -hmm. You know as much because you went to wake him the fuck up. Yep. And you're his manager, you should know what his, his behavior is like. Mm -hmm. Means if you do know what his behavior is like, then, you know, it's that. Decisive evidence. Plant that. Mm -hmm. Well then, let's continue. You should have already known that, Phoenix. Oh, fuck off. They didn't teach us. They teach that to us in school. He's not from where I remember. May I continue now? No point. Oh, well, yes, sleeping is in a warranted oh, no. alibi. How did you know that the map had his fingerprints? <laughs> You can hardly call the knife decisive evidence. The fingerprints on the knife could very well have been a clever camouflage. Then, um, what about the button? The button? It's clear from the crime scene that the victim and his murderer fought. During the fight, the killer ripped the button from the giant ninja's costume. Oh, yeah, Guam died from strangulation. You're talking about this button, correct? That button was found in the fleet of Matt's Hakama, isn't that correct? I think that makes it very decisive evidence. Yeah. Looks like you were out fucks again, Miss Lord. Anyway, the knife doesn't prove a thing. Please fix your testimony. I can't stand the sight of a man who can't gracefully accept his defeat. I can't stand the sight of a man who lies to a fucking feet. Still look at me. With an icy stare, yes. Miss Andrews, for Mr. Wright's sake, please add this to your information to your testimony. Okay. in the face with this autopsy report. Motherfucker! Oh, yeah. Autopsy report! Whack! This is the victim's autopsy report. It clearly states that the cause of death was death. <laughs> what? It clearly states that the cause of death. It clearly states that the cause of death was strangulation by a scar. Strangulation? The knife stab to the victim was done after the victim had already died. Uh, and, and what does that mean? Let's examine the evidence. This button has the, vi has the victim's blood on it, which would mean that it was ripped off the costume when? After the knife was stabbed into the victim. Exactly, which means it's impossible that this button was torn off during the victim's final struggle. Because the victim was strangled to death in that fight. 
Octopus. Right, Miss Andrews? There is no way this button was ripped off during the struggle. This button was consciously pulled off the victim's already dead body. Order, order. What is the meaning? What is the meaning of this rot? I was just about to say that. So what if the button was torn off the body after the victim had already died? What does that change? Everything. Let me ask you one simple question, Mr. Edgeworth. Why was the button torn off? What purpose did that serve? We now know this button was not torn off during the fight, so the murderer took the time and effort to purposefully rip this from the victim's body. That would mean the murderer had something in mind, wouldn't it? M Mr. Wright, does this mean... Does this mean you know what the murderer wanted to do with this button? What was it? In the crime. It's been the crime on the guard! There is only one logical reason for doing something like that. It was to pin the crime on Mr. Ungard. There is no way anyone would put a bloody button in their own pants. That's right, Mr. Ungard was set up. By the real killer, of course. Uh, and the real murderer is... Well, Mr. Wright, who in the world is the real killer, then? Finally, I can't believe I managed to bring this trial all the way up to this point. Phoenix, you can't leave your gal down yet. Not until the very end. The real killer, the person who plans to frame Mr. Ungard, is... You! It's Miss Andrews. Mm -hmm. you. <laughs> yes, it's my affair. <laughs> no. It's gotta be Miss Andrews. She's the only one with opportunity and a reason. Yeah. Take that! Oh, good. Balance is good. Miss Adrian Andrews. Right? Mr. Corridor's killer. What? Order, order, order. Mr. Wright, this is a very great matter. Do you have any evidence that supports your charge? I've got plenty. Any evidence? All of the evidence points to Miss Andrews. How preposterous. You can't stick any of that on me. I can't, can I? Would you care to test me? Then, what about this knife? The knife was used to stab the victim after he had already been strangled to death. It was used to throw suspicion onto Mr. Ungard, naturally. A knife covered in the defendant's fingerprints could only be taken from his room. And the only one who had dinner with him and knew which knife to take was you. This button was removed from the victim's body after he had already died. The only people who could have done so were the person who found his body or the killer. However, if Mr. Ungard was the real killer, there is no way he would have put such an incrimin so put there. there is no way he would have put such incriminating evidence in his own hacker. Uh, that was a bit too sexual, sorry. I'm not going to redo it. Hmm. The only person who could have put this button into Mr. Ungard's Hakama is the person who went to wake him from his nap, which is you, yet again, Miss Andrews. I see. What about the empty guitar case? That is also another piece of evidence that incriminates Miss Andrews. 
That costume was used to hide the real killer's identity as they fled to the crime scene. Now, who could have known that there was just such a costume inside the guitar case? It could only have been the person who prepared the costume for the victim. And that person is you, Miss Adrian Andrews! Miss Andrews' fingerprints were nowhere to be found on the guitar case. And it was you who proved that she was not wearing gloves at the time. Th that's right! That's because she did not intend on leaving any prints. If anyone had found out that she had touched the case, they would have asked her why. So to avoid leaving any prints, she used a towel or something else to open it. But, the glass of tomato juice is a different story. Miss Andrews purposely left her fingerprints on the glass to show that, yes, indeed, she was the classic dazed discoverer of a dead body. <laughs> and to top it all off, there is this photo. A photo of the killer as they exited the scene of the crime. No re reasonable person on earth can believe this nickel samurai is Mr. On Guard. He would be much too short for his own costume if it were him. Speaking of how tall people are, Miss Andrews, you're also kind of short in stature, are you not? Please, stop. Well, how about it, Miss Andrews? I've got her this time. Miss Andrews? What was that? There's a lot. It says I can't be forced to testify about something if I can if it can incriminate myself. Well, yes, you are absolutely correct, Miss Andrews. The law does provide us with a way to avoid self-incrimination. By allowing a witness not to testify, the testimony can cause damage to themselves. What? Leading the fifth is not something most people would think to do on the spot. I'm so happy for leading the fifth is. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, not like we kind of hear this all the time because of American shows, but we don't know your fucking constitution with British. Now I know. Actually, thinking back to yesterday in Mr. On Guard's room, she's coming to play fair. That's it. That's when Francisca planted this idea into her head. She must have told Miss Andrews to not testify if things look bad. You did a good job proving everything up to this point, Phoenix. But there's still one thing you haven't done. Huh? What's wrong, right? Are you finished already? No lot of evidence. Oh no. Oh, just so humorous, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm sure you realise this as well, Your Honor. But everything the good lawyer here has just proven enough to this point is meaningless. W what? Everything you've proven is circumstantial. Circumstantial. Yes, circumstantial. You have yet to prove provide. You've yet to provide a single piece of definitive proof. Proof that Miss Andrews did in fact harbour a wish to murder Mr. Coroner. Alrighty then. Miss Andrews, you did you want to kill Mr. Corridor? I believe this may lead to the, me incriminating myself, so I will abstain from answering. But, Miss Andrews, if you do that, it would be the same as admitting your guilt, don't you think? Maybe so, or maybe not. There is nothing to prove it either way. Besides, you don't even know what crime I will be guilty of due to my silence. No! She's taking a defiant attitude again. Mia, what should we do? Somehow, we've landed in the worst possible situation. 
I think we have reached a certain conclusion at this point in time. Ms. Adrian Andrews has refused to testify, and the defense's theory that she is the actual murderer has not been fully substantiated with solid definitive proof. But that's not true! In this situation, there is only one thing this court can do, and that is to declare a recess. Recess? I request that both the prosecution and the defense look further into this matter, and that at, and at tomorrow's trial... T tomorrow? We don't have a tomorrow! If we don't get a not guilty verdict today, then... Please wait, Your Honor! That That's not necessary! This, the trial! Please continue the trial! What are you sweating for? Your client is getting one more day to live, isn't he? That, that's not it. it! This isn't about that! Edgeworth, I know you know who the real killer is! Please, let the trial continue! If I don't get the verdict, then Maya... But it's impossible to continue as long as the witness refuses to testify. Now then, this court is... It is not impossible for this trial to continue. Miss Rachel, what, what are you... It's true Miss Andrews holds the right against self-incrimination. However, if the topic of conversation was something unrelated to whatever she may be guilty of, then she has no right to withhold testimony. Yes, that is very true, but... Actually, there is one little thing I'm curious about. Miss Andrews. Oh. When you found the victim's dead body, you poured yourself a glass of juice. Yes. And? I can't help but think how unnatural that is. Usually when one finds a body, they are shaken up, not stirring a glass of juice. So my actions were unusual, but I've already... Before you speak, I want you to state that if you have a reason behind your actions, I would like you to testify to that effect. Testify? Your Honour, I would like to request that the witness testify again as to what happened when she first discovered the victim's body. Whatever we find out in this testimony should in no way implicate the witness. <laughs> I don't know what it is about Edgeworth today, but I can't get a good read off of him. Is he friend or foe? I just don't know. Mm -hmm. The court acknowledges the prosecution's request. Miss Andrews, if you please. Look at that fucking card. Oh, glass of juice. I didn't really pour it for myself. I was surprised when I walked into the room and saw it in a me that messy state. And the barn, it was just sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. To be honest, I thought he just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. When I realised that he was dead, that's when I knocked over the flower vase. Hmm, so you pulled that glass of juice for the victim. Why didn't you say so in your earlier testimony? I didn't think I needed to include something so trivial. Phoenix, please be careful here. If you can't find anything wrong with this testimony, then there's nothing left. I know. That brain of yours. Now then, Mr. Wright, may I begin your cross examination. She can't have knocked the vase over after the crime was committed. She can't have done that. No, it's more around the thing I'm bringing up is the fact that when she saw Juan, she didn't think he was dead. Crime's in front of her. How could you not? How could you not with the fucking knife in his chest? So I would suggest that you uh, present that to that. 
You're thinking too. You're thinking a bit too wide again, honey. So you honestly didn't think he was dead when you found him? No, not at all. Even though this is what you saw when you discovered the body? Ah! W what is the meaning of this? Isn't it obvious, Your Honor? There's a knife sticking straight out of Mr. Coroner's chest! Anyone who saw this scene would have immediately thought that here was a dead man! Mm. Uh, uh, that's... well, you see... I doubt a single person in the world would mistake it for someone who fainted, and then so nonchalantly go pour something to drink. Y your point is? Miss Andrews, your testimony just now, it was all one giant lie! <laughs> and your lie has proven one thing very clearly, that you are the real killer! It looks like the defense has somehow brought the ugly truth to light. The defendant, Mr. Madungard, is not guilty after all. That, that's impossible. You're wrong. Miss Andrews, try to have some composure. It, it wasn't me. It wasn't me, I tell you. It was Matt, I swear it. He's the one that killed Juan. But you were the one who refused to testify. And your reason for not doing so was that you might end up incriminating yourself. That's because... Miss Andrews, I will give you one last chance. What exactly are you hiding that may incriminate you? No, I... I refuse to testify. I'll bring it up myself. Then there is no need for this court to continue any further. Mr. Maraton God's innocent has been innocence has been clearly demonstrated. Is is it over? Have we have we found the truth at last? What's wrong, Phoenix? Usually well, usually the real killer confesses his or her guilt. And now that I think about it, this is the first time someone hasn't. In a sense, this is reality, Phoenix. They don't go, ah oh, no, I even confess everything! Oh! Now then, I would like to hand down my verdict for Mr. Matt on guard. Objection! Edgeworth. Your Honor. The prosecution feels that it would be premature to pass down a verdict at this time. Please, for fuck's sake. What? The reason is quite simple. This witness has yet to speak about the absolute real truth. <laughs> of course. I can't get the truth now. The absolute real truth? What are you- Witness, don't you understand yet? Huh? I don't know who planted this silly idea in your head, but as long as you protect yourself through your silence, Martin Guard will go free, and in his place, you will become the guilty party. That's- that's a lie! I- I don't believe you! I was told, if I spoke, if I spoke, then it would be all over, and Matt would never be declared guilty. What in the world is she talking about? I, I can't speak about it. I'm too scared. It's Francisca von Karma. Huh? Don't you remember, Phoenix? Miss Andrews' lips lie gripping tightly onto the words of another, because she doesn't have the strength to believe in herself. Then, right now, Miss Andrews is... Yesterday she was tossed a lifesaver by Miss Von Karma. Don't say a word, no matter what happens. If you do, Matt and Gard will be acquitted. Miss Andrews undyingly believes in those words right now, and is clinging on to them. Then what should we do? This, this is the first time I've come across anything like this. 
time just has to be the killer, right? All we have to do is... Is get I'm not guilty! That is my only priority! It wasn't me! I'm begging you! Please believe me! I didn't kill Huang! Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? The court can't continue on like this. Therefore, I'd like to hear what you intend to do. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? Right, I suggest you think very carefully about this. Think about what this witness did and what she did not do. And think about who is the real mastermind behind this crime. Isn't that obvious? There's no one else it could be except the woman crying over there, right? No. She lives by clinging onto the words of another. Mm -hmm. So what if she wholeheartedly believed that one did hide in the suicide note? Uh huh. Because somebody else told her? Okay. Or even if somebody else didn't tell her, she heard it from the police. Uh-huh. So she'd think that Juan did hide it. Uh-huh. So she'd have motive. Mm hmm And what if she thought that killing him would be the only way to... But if she then got found guilty, how would she find the suicide note? Wouldn't, because she didn't intend to get caught. She intended to pin it on Matt. Because they had a big rivalry to begin with. Okay. I don't know. But you keep oh. saying that she's the one. But she's the only one that could have killed him, sure. But is she the one that really planned it all? Well, really, killing Quan won't get the suicide note. No, it wouldn't. Come now, what will you do? What kind of man are you, Mr. Phoenix, right? Of course, I'm just to testify. I'm forced to testify. To justify. You're after the truth, not you're not guilty. I have to win a complete acquittal today. There's no way around that. But I can't bring myself to do it like this. Not when she's making a face like that. Well, yeah, a killer's not there like that normally. In, in this universe, may I say. <sighs> Miss Andrews, I would like to know what you are really hiding. Mr. Wright, are you sure you... Know what you're doing. Sure, Mr. On Guard would get an acquittal, but in his place you would be found guilty. Is this... Is this how you really... Is this how you really want this trial to end? Be quiet. How dare you? you you're trying to trick me! That's enough! I commend you for trying, Mr. Edgeworth. However, it is clear that the defense's theory is the truth. Oh, there we go. Uh. What a shame. <gasps> I'd hoped things wouldn't co come to this, however. W what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Andrews, since you absolutely refuse to testify, it falls on my shoulders to disclose this to the court. Stop. W Mr. Edgeworth? This witness, oh, I should put this, she has an illness. What? And because of this illness, she's tried to commit suicide in the past. Stop. Please stop. No matter how much you want to hide it, it's no use. I have the evidence right here. Ah! That's... That's the second part of the suicide report. The attempted suicide report. What will you do now, witness? You know what I'm about to do, don't you? I will now reveal to the court the true nature of the pitiful woman known as Adrian Andrews. Please, please stop! I beg you! If people find out! If people find out, I... I'll... If you're going to say you would choose death, that is of no concern to me. I'm 
easy to cold. However, before you die, I will pull the truth from your still breathing lips. Fucking hell. No matter what I have to do. So, will you tell the god yourself, or shall I? Either is fine with me. He's using his evil prosecutor persona to get what he needs. I... Hot talk, please. Help me. Can you help you? Nothing matters anymore. Can you help you? When I first saw him, I really thought he had fainted. Honest. On a knife. Come on. When I realised he was dead, that was when I formulated my plan. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made a dash back to Matt's room. And then, I stabbed Pond's dead body with the knife, and ripped off the button. Hmm. Just when I finished, after I was returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of an inconvenience. That's why... That's why I ended up using the Nickel Samurai costume. Inconvenience. So her crime is fabricating evidence. S stab the body with, with the knife? But why would you do that? Isn't it obvious? To pin the blame on a certain person. A certain cowardly man! What? What do you mean by all of this? It might take this court a little while to understand, but... This is the truth. The real killer is Matt, that scumbag of a man! I'll never forgive him! He's trying to escape his guilt again, just like last time! Last time? <laughs> it happened again! You are loving every time it happens. Yes, I Why? am. It's funny. You should have drunk him for dicks. Counter for this. Maybe. We'll see. So, Miss Andrews stabbed the victim, Juan Garda, in the chest with a, the knife. However, she didn't do it with murder in mind. She did it with the intent of framing Matt and Guard for the murder. And this, this is her crime. <laughs> What? what? How is this possible? I mean, wasn't this, this, wasn't this Andrew supposed to be the real murderer? Mr. Wright, please get over your shock and commence the cross examination. I suppose we best just press everything then, because if this is the truth, we have nothing to contradict it. But you could tell from the state of the state the room was in that there must have been a fight. Are you telling the truth when you say that you did not know he was dead? I had a scarf tied around his neck. But that scarf is part of the Jammy Ninja's costume, so... I didn't think anything about it was strange. His head was also sort of down a bit, so I couldn't see his face that well. That's why I thought I'd wake him up and go to pour the juice. What was this plan you had? I knew right away the murderer was Matt. I knew there was Juan. He was going to expose Matt's weakest weak point to the world. So Matt did this to stop Juan and silence him for good. When I thought, I should forge some evidence and pin this crime on Matt. So the forged piece of evidence with the knife on the bottom. The first thing that came to mind was to plant the knife. Again? Yeah. Oh, so you could get the knife, correct? The knife Matt used at dinner had his fingerprints all over it. I thought if I used that, 
then the police would certainly turn their eyes towards him. Matt was napping with his costume on at the time. He slipped in, took the knife, and returned to the scene of the crime. It's a very interesting girl, isn't it? So you were the one to stab the victim with that knife? Please be to think about it now. The horrible thing I did. But at the time, I couldn't control my own body. It moved on its own. Then, when I stabbed Juan's dead body, suddenly I realised something. But I used the pattern somehow. I could make Matt look even more suspect. So you thought to rip one of the buttons off and then plant it in Mr. Ungard's hammer? Yes, that's what I had planned to do. But things never go that smoothly, do they? An inconvenient? There was a woman with a camera at the ready, loitering in the hallway. Because it was locked up. There was also a woman with a ray gun at the ready pacing back and forth. That's not bad for you. I had already been caught and made into a big scoop for a certain weekly tabloid once. I couldn't very well go out looking like myself and get caught again. Why did I start talking again? Um, you were going to prepare that costume, weren't you? Yes, I took it from Global Studios. I also put it into Juan's guitar case the day before the award ceremony. You did this in preparation for the press conference, correct? Yes, Juan wanted to wear that costume and hold a press conference in it. He was going to disclose Matt's big secret there. And what is the secret? That, I don't know. Anyway, I thought that if I were to leave Juan's room in the Nickel Samurai costume, then people would think that Matt was the real murderer. I was very careful not to leave any fingerprints when I opened the guitar case. I absolutely did not want anyone to know about the costume. I think we've heard enough. So after that, you went back to the Sun Guard's room and planted the button. And then that's how karma. Yes. After that, I folded up the costume I was wearing and put it into a bag. Then I snuck it out of the hotel and got rid of it. My word! What does all this mean? Mr. Edgeworth, is it? Mm -hmm. The real criminal is Matt Ungard! Yesterday, that woman prosecutor sat me down for a talk. Francisca, huh? She said that I should, under no circumstances, confess to what I had done. That if I just kept quiet, Matt would be found guilty for sure. I... I had no choice but to believe in her words. What this witness has done is clearly unlawful. However, as long as her testimony stands, we can be certain she is not a real killer. Wait, Your Honor! The defense still. Right. It's pointless. At this point in time, it is not possible to indict Miss Andrews on anything. Yes, exactly. There isn't a single piece of evidence that points to her as the murderer. The cross examination of this witness is over, and so is today's trial. We couldn't establish that the witness was the culprit. Please let's go, Sora. But... Mr. Edgeworth, please place Miss Andrews under arrest for further questioning. Understood, Your Honour. The prosecution will arrange for her detention immediately. That's all court is adjourned for today.
Would you mind if I asked you something? What is it? Before you leave court today, I wondered if I might look at one thing. The card in your hand, it's had my interest for quite some time now. What exactly is it? Oh, this? Mr. Wright also asked about this. Although I didn't remember at the time you asked me about it, Mr. Wright. I remember just now. I found this in the room on that day. The room? That day? Yes. I found this card when I discovered Juan's body. It's on the... Also. It was lying there, right next to him. You found that card next to the victim's body? I suppose I must have unconsciously slipped it into my pocket. But it's not as if this card has any relevance to Juan's murder, right? Yeah, I guess not, but it's some strange card, if you ask me. But as far as clues this case, I don't see why. Hold it! Witness that card! Give it to me! Hurry! Edgeworth? Do you have any idea what you have stupidly let inadvertently done? This... I can't believe you hid this from me all this time! I, I need to... What is this all about? I've never seen it was so emotional before. Mm. Mm. Oh God. What in the world is it? And what does it mean? Yes, to be continued, bitch. Woo! All right, there you go. So uh, we failed, technically. <laughs> but we still have more we can do. You're obviously a bit perturbed. A little bit. Cool. See you in investigation. Thank you all for watching this latest addition to our growing collection of varying games and reviews, just videos in general. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Please leave a like and a comment in the comments section down below. We love hearing what you think. If you have any recommendations for either games to play or material to review, let us know in the comments and we'll do our best to get to them when we can. If you like our content, subscribe to see more. Check out our playlists if you are looking for something new or worried you've missed an episode. Click on the recommended video appearing on the screen if you want to see more of us right now. You won't regret it, we swear! <laughs> Subscribe to our Patreon to become one of our lovely beans today. However, if that is too expensive for you at this time, please consider a one-off donation on our Ko-fi. Help poor tea wench today. And with that, lime out! Dragon out! Bye!